Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. It's time for us to have our second conversation for this morning. This morning, we're going to be looking at handling marital crisis. Joining us to look at this topic extensively is a seasoned expert, the executive director of the Nigerian Institute of Counseling. And uh, she's the Institute of Counseling of Nigeria. Yes, the executive director, Institute of Counseling of Nigeria, Dr. Tolu Okwe Gary. Dr. Tolu, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Would Beyond you, being you? a seasoned expert, you must know that Dr. Tolu is also an on-air personality on Nigeria Info FM, and she has a very, very much uh, li widely listened to show. And I'll be asking her the timing of her show so that by the time we're done with the conversation, so you can also ensure that you tune in whilst she's on radio. Dr. Tolu, uh, how, how has the lockdown been in terms of being a marital counselor? And I'm asking because we find that it seems that there might be more cases of uh, or more people starting to realize that they're spending more time together since COVID-19 pandemic hit. So how has it been for you as a counselor? Because I'm sure that your phone has been ringing and your schedule has been busy. How has it been since, since COVID-19 set in? Yeah. Um, yeah. Being a marriage counselor and a sex therapist, um, pardon the way I'm talking, I, I slept late, so oh. <laughs> I woke up late. So. Sorry. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah, so um, it's been hectic, as in, you, you, the, 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 there's something about us in this part of the world. I do not think we invest in our relationships. So people are in relationship because of uh, the wrong reasons. What would people say? I'm old enough to get married. All your, all your friends are getting married. Uh, you know, so many wrong reasons. You know, and because of that, a lot of people are not finding happiness in most of this relationship. And because the way we are, we are wired to keep our problems to ourselves and act like everything is fine. So you just notice that people now look for outlet to make up for the unhappiness that they are having in their relationship or their marriages. So people close from work and hang out with the boys or with the girls. Uh, some um, have girlfriends, a lot of people, boyfriends, you know, those are their outlets. So it's like it's not working at home, but I need uh, an outlet to make myself happy. So unfortunately, you are now in lockdown and you are stuck with a relationship or marriage that you have not been investing in or on. So it becomes a problem because uh, when you have not been investing, there is nothing to take from that relationship or marriage when you are stuck with it. So it makes people uh, to face a lot of challenges during the lockdown because you know you don't talk, you, you are not friends, sex is almost close to zero. Um, Relationship-wise, you are not connecting emotionally, you are not connecting. And then now there is all the outlets are shut down so you are stuck with that person. So it leads to a lot of crisis, a lot of people um, unhappy, abuses, um, so many issues. And of course, yeah, I, I, I didn't want to, I, I was planning, I'm not going to uh, attend to people at the beginning of the lockdown, but I had to quickly switch to Zoom and start taking clients because it was crazy. And, you know, so even beyond marriage in every other aspect of uh, our lives, you know, like I said, you know, I manage the Institute of Counseling in Nigeria. And so we have grief counselors, we have crisis counselors, child and adolescent. You can see the rates, you know, of, of uh, the increase in rape cases, in child abuse, in domestic violence, you know, as a result of the fact that normally, like I said, we do not invest in our relationship and marry. We just carry on as if everything is fine, you know. So you are now you are now uh, um, in a place where the, uh, the marriage or the relationship you're not investing in emotionally. You need to take something away from that relationship or marriage. So it was tedious for people, and yeah, it, it was a very it, it is still a trying period for Nigerians or Africans who are not used to talking to professional counselors or therapists. Okay, when you say investing in our relationships, what exactly do you mean by investing? Like, what are some of the ways in which we can invest in our relationship? I believe that some people would probably do it if they knew any better, 
Uh, what are some of the things that they need to do to ensure that they are putting something into the relationship to help it grow and thrive? Right. Now, the, the point is this. Like I said, number one, we marry for wrong reasons most of the time, you know. So, in fact, people that are listening to ask themselves that question, why did I get married to this person? Or why am I in this relationship? Why are you there? For some, it's because, oh, I'm getting too old. For some, it's because, oh, I just need the wedding paparazzi. It's not even about the marriage. It's more about the wedding ceremony for a lot of people. For some, it's about, oh, what will people say? For some, it's because, oh, my pastor says so, or my mom says so. For some, it's because, oh, um, 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 this person, the family, oh, they think the family is good and all of that. So you are not even connected in the first place. So that is even the beginning of the problem. Why are you in that place? So if you find yourself in a wrong relationship or in a wrong marriage, it, that's a big issue in the first place. And a lot of Nigerians are on this table or a lot of Africans are on this table. Now, that's the first part. So, but if you find yourself in a bad one or in, in a relationship or marriage where you entered for the wrong reasons, does that mean you are doomed for life? No. So the next thing is now, how do you fix it? What do you need to do? How do you invest in this relationship? Now, relationship does not take care of itself. You need to take care of it. You need to be deliberate because the time will come or a time will come like this kind of situation where you'll be needing to get or to take away from that relationship. If you have not been investing from it, like I said, there'll be nothing to take away. Now, how do you invest? You are deliberate. You are deliberate. You are there for this person. You care about this person genuinely. And if you feel like you have problem, you talk to professional counselors. You don't look for alternatives. You don't start saying, okay, uh, my wife is not connecting. Uh, my wife does not um, uh, like um, sex. So I'm going to look for a girlfriend, a side chick, or a sugar boy, whatever you call it, you know, or, or a sidekick. No, whatever is not working, you sit down and fix it. Oh, she does not dress well. Oh, or he does not dress well. You look at it and look, how do I fix this? You just make sure that that marriage or relationship is giving you whatever you are looking for. It is possible to get it. You might not get it 100%, but it is possible to get up to like 95% of what you want from your relationship. But it is not automatic. You need to invest. You need to be deliberate. You need to wake up in the morning and look at your relationship and marriage and look at what, what are we doing? What is going on here? How have we been doing for the past one week or for the past one month? What can I do to improve things? It is not like looking for alternatives to fix what is not working. That's what we do. No, fix it, sit back and be deliberate. You know that this person you don't talk, communication is a problem, fix it. Intimacy is a problem, fix it. And you are having financial issues, fix it. You are not connecting in one way or the other, fix it. And if you try, you sit together and talk about all of these things, you locate your problem and you sit down and you fix them so that you can just be happy in that marriage. And if you know you can't fix them, you book an appointment with a professional. That is the right thing to do. But we don't do that in Nigeria. We don't. And I would believe that, you know, maybe because of our very conservative nature in a way, we're not quick to open up to people. We're very worried about what we people say and stigma. These are some of the things that have inhibited the need for people to embrace therapy. But it's very important that as much as we look after our bodies, we must also look after our minds. And there are specialists, people that are trained, people like you that are specially trained for that. And we must also ensure that we, we, we do that when we need to. Let's talk about the role of money in relationships. And uh, this is because there are people who have a firm belief that money is... Uh, a very, very important tool. There have been arguments in support and uh, against the fact that money is a major tool for the, the for making a relationship to work. And this is a personal question that someone in-house has asked that I ask you, um, the role of money in relationships. In fact, the person gave a scenario. The person's partner has been telling the person that, you know, I really like you. I want to be with you, but you don't have enough money to be able to satisfy my needs. And I have really big dreams. And that was the actual scenario. So what, what's your take on that, Dr. Tolu? All right. Uh, um, quickly, I will quickly talk about taking care of your mind, then I will answer the money question. 
Now, the truth of the matter is Nigerians or Africans need to realize that it is okay not to be okay. It is okay. It is okay not to be perfect. It is okay to be, best, to be messed up. Stop, I mean, we should stop acting like we have everything put together. People must not hear or people must not know. Like, for real, it is okay because you can't, and this is why we are mounting so much pressure on our spiritual leaders. You know, you make your pastor or your imam, you make him the, 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 the accountant, the sex therapist, the, the, the grief counselor, everything. You keep taking from that one person. And that's why the person too is even in trouble. Because you are even taking so much from them, they can't even concentrate on their lives. Africans need to realize that it is okay not to be okay. You're, you, you are not just uh, your body. So you go to the hospital or your soul, and then you go to your spiritual leaders. You also have a mind. And there is no health without mental health. When your mind is messed up, you are, your level of productivity is at zero. When your mind is messed up, you, can, you are not even your, you can never be your, in fact, I could tell you that therapy could actually take care of your mind and your soul. I could even explain that to you, but that's another dimension. So it's so important, it's much more important. Most of the issues that people are dealing with, most of the sicknesses are the result of emotional issues that are, that are not well taken care of. When your mind is messed up, expect to start seeing serious illnesses coming up. Expect to, to start seeing that your, even your spiritual life could start becoming zero because you can't even concentrate and pray. So your mind is that very important. You need to take very good, good care of it. Cultivate the habit of talking to professional counselors. Book appointment with a therapist when you are down, when you feel like you needed to talk to. So start talking to friends and family. Professional counseling is not giving advice. It is helping you to look for all the incongruence, the things that are, that are troubling you, helping you to look at, because for some reasons, even you might not even know where the problem is coming from. Professionals help you to locate them and resolve them. It is the right thing to do. Now, secondly, talking about the money part, it is part of our problem as Africans. And I tell you, that is the truth. There's a way we see money. Like, money, and you, do, you see, what, what counseling does for you is what I would call like being born again. You know, it's a complete mind shift. You don't think the way people think. You do not reason the way people reason because as in what bothers people, what worries people would not worry you. And I think that is why I think an average Nigerian, when, student, when you know, most of our students, when they pass through the institute, there is one common thing that they are always saying, Dr. Tolu, how will everybody know about this? Because the way we see money, that is the foundation of the problem. It's not the way we should see it. Money should not rule you. And that's why when people say, eh, I can't marry vision, no. I can't marry, uh, uh, what do they call it? Potential. I can't marry, uh, I can't marry prospect. What do you want to marry? What do you want to marry? You want to marry, I mean, look at all these things. Look at the way our youth are today. Our minds are so messed up. We, we, we see money as gods. We, we, just, we just have wrong impression about these things. So you, so back to the question, somebody is saying, eh, I love you, I want to be with you, I like you, but you do not have money. For real? For real? The, the, the answer is the person does not really care about you. Now, I tell people, if you see a lady or a man that is hardworking, you will know. It is just that most of the time, we want to, want to you know, to know our ladies, as in, you know, I, I do matchmaking. And I see all of this. In fact, I stopped doing much. I don't even have time for it anyway. I was doing it because I just see that. I mean, I have a lot of single men coming to me, single women. So I feel like, okay, if these people are lonely, why not just join them together? I stopped doing this personally because of this problem. Because at a point, I had to start wondering, why are we thinking like this? You want a man, you are a lady, you are single, and you know that you really want to settle down, and you are looking for a man, it must have a range, it must have this, it must this, this. Although for some reasons, I also do not blame the ladies, because some, some of them have had uh, their fingers burnt, because 
say, oh, let me stay with you. Let me grow with you. And then maybe the guy now made all the money. I've seen all of that, actually. Made the money and then disappointed them. But sincerely speaking, people's actions should not dictate your reaction if your mind is, is, is well taken care of. You should be able to have a mind of your own. You are not supposed to be pushed around by what the society is saying, what people are doing or whatever. People can do what they like. When your mind is heavy, you will be able to make the right decision for yourself. So back to the question, if somebody say, I love you because you don't have money, I do not want to be with you, please run from that person. Except if you are a guy or a lady that you are not make, that is not making effort. You are not trying, you are not pushing. If you see someone that is making effort, you do not need a soothsayer. You, but it's just that we look at, you know, look at all these guys that are driving cars and sagging their jeans, and then you want to be with them, and you see what all these things are doing to young lady. This one today they took her pants. This one today they took a uh, 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 private part, and you still want to be with those kind of men. It's, it, it, isn't that saying that something is actually wrong with your mind? You know. So if, if if anybody is telling you I want to be with you, but you do not have money, the person doesn't care about you. Run. There's no point being with that person. And I'm going to say this to our young people: stop using certain standards to measure yourself. Stay on your lane. As long as you know you are doing well, you are not you are making effort. You do not need to compare yourself with people that that are not doing anything and are making money. Don't. You need to be consistent. So as long as a man. A woman is consistent. The person is not an NFA. I mean, NFA is no future ambition. If you see somebody that is pushing, that is making genuine efforts, you will know. And if you are making your genuine effort, and you are staying on your lane, and you are pushing, and you have ambition, and you are moving towards your plan, and somebody is saying, you know what? I cannot wait for you. I do not believe in all of this. Please run. Let him go. No matter how much you care about that person. Okay. After some time, you start thinking over him or her, take right. your time, and the person that will really respect you for whom you are and stay with you is going to come along. Okay, Dr. Tolu, let's talk about another very important conversation uh, because I've seen uh, um, certain men express a lot of concern con concerning this matter. We see that social media has put a lot of pressure on men, most especially with reproductive organs and the size of their reproductive organs. And this has put a lot of uh, made a lot of people, most especially the men, insecure because we now have or we assume that there's a certain standard, there's a certain way. In fact, they sell uh, potions to help uh, help with reproductive, uh, help uh, intimacy, help in quotes is the word. And, and a lot of people have put that as a focus or as a key reason to determine who they're going to be with. And I'm saying this for the benefit of the men, most especially those who have felt under that sort of pressure. You know, should it... How, what would you say to men who are under that pressure, pressure of performance, pressure of uh, size of reproductive organs, and the insecurity that so social media and the society puts on the man to be able to, quote unquote, deliver? Right. So um, I'm trying to, I mean, people have been listening to my show. I talked about this a lot. So I'm now trying to look at the right way to uh, discuss this, considering the platform and the timing yes but i'm going to try as yes. possible right. now one of the major problem of african men is this i mean i saw something on social media recently and i think it really made sense about somebody posted that one of the problem with the black lives matter one of the reasons why the white is a bit jealous of the black is this thing you know that we are talking about and i think it actually makes sense so naturally, an average African man is endowed. Naturally. So I do not even know what you are looking for in the first place. Now, that's why I said the problem is with, the, it's with our mind. Our minds are messed up. And it's, it's more about what we call uh, conditioning. You know, you see, it's not like anybody sits you down to tell you this is the way you should do it. This is, I mean, how do people even learn how to make love? Especially in this part of the world where we don't even talk to sex therapists, you know. But we just pass that message, you know, suddenly we pass it across from generation to generation. And then before you know it, now the new generation are passing the kind of wrong messages across and we are beginning to accept. Now, one of the major problems of an average Nigerian man, let me even stick to Nigeria, is 
this performance pressure. In fact, most the major problem in marriages today, I will tell you, is this intimacy problem. Because unfortunately for our men, women are becoming more enlightened, more aware, and that, that is not a bad thing, and it's going to happen. So women are beginning to demand, also, okay, I desire satisfaction. I want to also start enjoying this thing. I don't want to keep doing it for you. And that is putting a lot of pressure on our men who are used to their women doing it. Now, their problem is not, ah, why is this woman complaining? Why is, she, is it because it is not about size as it is about skills? What you need to work on is your skill. It's actually not the size. It's, 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 such, a, it's such a very terrible situation. Because now, even if you tell an average Nigerian man, now go and drink kerosene so that this thing will be big, they will drink it. People are taking their money and they are so comfortable with it. I'm going to tell you this. When people come for me for sex therapy, I could tell you where their problem is coming from. Majorly, I mean, major, most of their problem is, I could tell you it's 98% psychological from my experiences with my clients. So it's, it's a lot of wrong uh, notion, a lot, a lot of wrong conditioning, a lot of wrong belief, a lot of ignorance. Because for crying out loud, for most women, about 75% of women will not even reach orgasm with penile penetration. So why are you so worried about this size that you are so, that you are drinking everything and buying everything and, and is making your life miserable? It is not so much about the size as it is of the skills. Size matters, but it's not all that matters. There are more other things. Your skill actually matters much more. Now, when people come for therapy, I tell you, I see all of this, and most of the time, I want to deal with the issue from the root so that the problem could be solved permanently. But most of the time, even when they are done, when everything is over, some we see ask me, oh, Dr. T, you do not have anything, you know, something that we can just use to spice things up. And I'm like, for real? Why are you so used to drink this, take this, kayama towel of this? It's just like women saying you drink this thing and then the place will be so sweet and the man will not be able to go for real. There's much more to love making than the genitals. All right. So, after, yeah. Yeah, although, sorry, we're about to say something. Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah. After men need to just relax. All right. And go and master their skills and stop drinking all this because most of these things have, uh, they have negative effects master your skill and stop putting yourself under pressure all right because first and foremost the major reason why you're having this erectile dysfunction is performance pressure because as soon as you are going there you're feeling like oh will i be able to do it will i perform well will i do better how is she looking is she happy is she money that's the beginning of your problem okay you so to, dr tolu let's talk you about to, you know before yeah. we get into the problem there are people who are not yet there, you know, they're not yet married. And uh, we're hearing about a lot of all these marital issues. This is happening and that is happening. What are some of the most important things that single people must look out for or must do to ensure that it gives them a better chance at having a happy married life? Okay, so um, like I said before, you know, there are certain habits that have been passed across from generation to generation, and our mindset is totally messed up. Like, if you see the way, I mean, you see certain posts on social media, and you see the comments, I, I stop reading some comments. Because when you read comments, and you have understanding of all of this, you can start getting sick. Sometimes I get agitated and anxious, like, how do we change all of this? Because where do you start from? So, it's it's totally about mind shift and how do i are going to do that i'm still trying to wrap my head around it and i'm doing the little i can at the institute of counseling in nigeria but for young people please go for pre-marriage counseling professional clinical pre-marriage counseling i'm not talking about your church or your mosque counseling now you might want to do that it's good i'm not saying they are bad but please make sure because from practice, I have seen this. Now, you see people marry for the wrong reason for the first place. When you are coming for pre-marriage counseling, it does not mean that you, even if you have fixed the date, it does not mean that that marriage should go on. 
And it means that even if you are backing out, you know you are backing out and your mind is heavy. It's not like you're backing out and you're breaking down. Because the therapist or the counselor is going to work with you to make the right decision for yourself. Decisions that you can defend in 10, 20, 50 years to come. We need to cultivate the habit of talking to professional counselors before we get married, book pre-marriage counseling. I will tell you that pre-marriage counseling is one of the very unpopular services that I render in my clinic. Unfortunately, very, very unpopular. I, I'm embarrassed to say that this is actually the first time I'm hearing of like professional premarital uh -oh. counseling, because I would always just yeah. think our churches yeah. and our mosques yeah. offer it. So that's that's what they mean by premarital counseling. Very unpopular. People will read will uh, people will rather invest in wedding ceremony than invest in the marriage itself. You know, like I said before, the major problem is that people are getting married for the wrong reasons. Now, if you go for professional premarriage counseling. There are a lot of things that we are going to use to evaluate you, to test you, and that you are going to be able to open up. I'm going to, I've seen a lot of issues. I, I see issues only on a daily basis in my clinic. And when I think I've seen it all, I see another shocker. So I could tell you that seriously, our major problems start from the foundation, marrying for the wrong reason. And people, if you want to buy a uh, present for people who are getting married, please, Instead of buying presents for them, instead of buying a show, book a pre-marriage counseling for them. Let people know that, do I really want to enter this marriage? If I want to do this, why am I doing it? If I am going into this, what are the things to expect? I mean, you see people having a lot of, uh, um, let, let, me, let me talk a bit about, you know, a, a bit about kink, about a, a, a bit about paraphilia, a bit about uh, setting unimaginable sexual preferences. I am not saying it is bad to have whatever you have, but the thing is, you should let the person you are dealing with, the person who is, going to, who is saying, I'm investing my life, I'm committing my life to this, you should be able to be bold enough to tell the person, you know what, this and this and this are, are, are the things that are my preferences. It's not that the person will not enter the marriage and say, yeah, I'm dead. And then the person cannot even come out because if you, if you come out, everybody will start looking at you. Oh, you are divorced. So because of that, landlord is not going to give you a house. The, the church member are going to ostracize you. You know? So it is very important. It, it, maybe, maybe it looks like I'm, I'm trying to sell a product. No, that's not the point. Like I said, the point is this is about mind shift. And I'm looking at how do we change the mind? How do we deal with all of this? The easiest way to tackle this problem is to talk to a professional counselor and make sure you know what you are going into. It's right. not like after 10, 15 years, somebody will now come out and say, eh, I do not know how to tell you. I mean, I'm going to give you a scenario. I, 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 I mean, someone, I mean, I, I'm trying to also be careful about confidentiality, but I could tell you that I have had, like I said, I've seen issues, but let me give you a scenario of a man who is attracted to, to, to women, you know, we know that that is, that uh, uh, is not possible in Nigeria anyway, I mean, according to law, but th that does not mean there are, there are no people like that, okay? But the point is, you are attracted to women, and then you have been in marriage for 10, 15 years, making the life of that woman miserable. Like, what is the big deal? At the beginning of the marriage, let the person know, you know what? Before we get married, this is who I am. Oh. Then let the person know, you know what? Okay, what are the pros and cons? Can I be with you? And the person is saying, you know, I need to get married because if I do not get married or I need to have children, because if I do not have children, my family, my church or my mosque, people might not be happy about it. The woman could say, okay, I understand your reasons. I'm going to be with you. And these are the way we are going to tackle our issues if we eventually find ourselves in this kind of marriage. Now, that is one scenario. It could be a thousand and one other scenario. But the way we do in this part of the world as couples, we do not even open up to each other. You hide a lot of stuff. How could you be going into marriage with baggages of secrets? And then you expect everything to be fine. No. And these are, these are the reasons why we keep seeing not just divorce, there are cases of violence uh, in marriage. And if we continue, Dr. Tolu, we cannot even exhaust this conversation. I feel that we're only just scratching the surface 
of all the many things that we need to discuss. And we would love to have you again, if you'd please oblige us with, the pre with your presence, uh, because there's still more that we need to talk about in this regard. But how can people reach out to you personally? Okay, right. So people can... All right, thank you so much, Olive. I know so much to talk about. Um, people can reach me on on social media, uh, Dr. Tolu underscore the fixer. Dr. Tolu underscore the fixer, or they could check out Itimesi Clinic or check out the Institute of Counseling in Nigeria. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Tolu, for joining us. We've been talking about uh, marital issues, and Dr. Tolu has broken it down from a professional standpoint, some of the causes of marital issues during COVID and even generally, and what single people must need to know. And one takeaway from this is we must all invest in our relationships. Single people, married people, single people must go for premarital counseling. But that's all that we can take for now.